My back hurts. Hey guys. Alrighty, chatty guys. Let me tell you a sad story. So, this intro was completely filmed like a week ago. It was edited, it was color graded, it was ready to go, and then today I go onto the computer to finish editing this freaking video, and guess what's gone? Just that one video, that one clip introducing the whole freaking video. I spent probably about two hours, two, two and a half hours trying to recover that freaking file. I downloaded like five different programs to do so and every time I'd get to the recovery stage, they wanted to charge me a hundred dollars to recover it. A hundred dollars. So that's my uh... That's my tragic story for all of you today. But anyway, hey guys, I'm Jessica. And I was sitting there on my bed the other day, hanging out. Okay, well, I, I wasn't really hanging out, I was reading. Not hanging out with anyone, I have no friends. I looked around and I was like, I have a really plain room. I've only been in this room for about three years now. And I don't, let's be honest, spend that much time in here. So it kind of dawned on me that I could do a little art project to spruce up my bedroom without spending a single penny. This project has been on my mind for quite some time. Why did I do that? This project has been on my mind for quite some time, and in fact, I actually started it sometime last year, but I only painted three fake Polaroids. Ow. Three fake Polaroids, and I just never finished. So today, I'm finally committing, and so I want to paint 50 in total. That's a pretty overwhelming number for just one video. So I decided to divide this into two parts. This is part one. My arm is killing me. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. So obviously, we have to start by chopping up some paper. My original plan was to make them all the same size, but after realizing how freaking long that was gonna take, I changed my mind. And it's definitely not because I'm lazy. I <clears throat> know, uh, this is like the most interesting thing you've probably seen all year. But let's skip to the actual painting process. So to warm us both up, I decided to show you the process in full for the first five paintings. I had no real vision for any of these, but for this one I decided to do wet on wet, which just means wetting the paper. And then I added a hill, which is making me ask now, why did I do wet on wet here? I added some clouds, which for me just means dabbing a flat brush on the paper. After letting it dry, I decided to add more clouds, and then I filled my hill in with watercolor brush pens. I haven't painted since around December, so this was kind of just a warm up for me to kind of get back into the swing of things. I then added a tree. I've, I've never been very good at trees, so I was kind of just winging it. And the branches ended up getting really thick. I, why didn't I just stop here, honestly? So here's our first project, dried and completed. Our second one is much better than the last, I promise you. Adding a line to divide the water and the sky, I added really bright colors to the upper half. I wanted something kind of moody, but also like a storm that's being broken through by the sunset. Again, no real plan here, I just kinda let my mind do whatever it wanted to do. And it didn't really turn out that bad for someone who has absolutely no idea what they're doing. Can I just tell you that the combination of blue and orange is like really stunning when it comes to watercolor and the contrast makes the colors really stand out against each other? I would definitely say that this is one of my favorite ones. Adding water, I knew I wanted it to be wavy. My way of doing this is plotting out the waves, which look a little bit like little hills while everything is wet, then letting it dry and then adding some sea foam to it. I find that plotting out the waves while everything's still wet just makes for better blending. The watercolor didn't build up enough here, so I added some white acrylic paint, and that definitely made the sea foam pop. So here's our finished project. No 
So for number three, I really wanted to do mountains. So I started with a bright blue background, and then I used my brush pens to plot out where I wanted the mountains to line up. I wanted them overlapping, so I decided to do three layers, the first being the lightest and the last being the darkest. I love these brush pens. They have simplified my life so much and they take so little time to dry that I can work on projects a lot quicker. Now to add some highlights or shading, what is that? To add th this, I went in with white watercolor, then blended it in with the mountains. If you get the brush pen watercolor slightly wet, it blends out. Is this professional? No. Will I stop doing it? Also no. So for the final step, I decided to add some fluffy little clouds, and we are officially done with number three. Okay, so for number four, I actually laid in bed last night planning it. it it literally helped me fall asleep. Taking a milk cap, I added dark blue watercolor all around it. Lifting it, do you now see my vision? Do, do, do you see the- do you get it? It's- it's a moon. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? Don't worry guys, it's, it's just a paint chip. I tried to darken the edges, and this is where it gets real lit, because we're gonna be adding stars to this masterpiece. And don't worry, the moon isn't finished yet. So, I used a toothbrush to splatter white acrylic paint, because I feel like watercolor paint just kinda spreads out in a way I don't like. I didn't want to go overboard, because too many stars muddle paintings. Let me tell you, I learned that the hard way. <sighs> oh. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna do the moon texture. This part is really what could make or break this painting. So don't screw it up. A little gray, a little blue, a little white, a little more gray, and the moon is now textured. I've always struggled with this, this is not something I'm good at, but I was pretty satisfied with the way it came out. I wanted the moon to look like it was glowing, so I added some white watercolor around it and blended it out. I am actually really surprised that this worked. Here's the finished thing. My nose is whistling. Our last one, number five, is going to be keeping up the night sky theme, but this one will be a Milky Way. I'm a little bit obsessed with the night sky. My way of doing this is to plot out the Milky Way by going dark to light, leaving a light patch in the middle where I want the Milky Way to go. I've said Milky Way at least a dozen times by now, oh my gosh. Basically a combination of dark blue and purple. After I dried the Purple stopped showing up though. I let it dry, then added some light blue and white watercolor paint while blending into our dark blue for a more blended and natural feel. Splish splash some stars on, and then I plotted out a mountain. I didn't want it to be the main focus of the painting, so I made it not the main focus. And again, my watercolor brush pens came in to save the day. The way the black builds up is so nice. So here's the last one completely done. So from this point forward, we're gonna kinda speed through the next couple of paintings because, I mean, we've been watching me paint for eight minutes. How much more can you take?
now that all 25 are complete, guess what we're gonna be doing? We're gonna be putting it down to filming wall right now. Obviously, we haven't gotten to 50 yet. So welcome to my filming wall. <laughs> we're just gonna tape these up on the wall like the classy lady I am. It's gonna be a lot of work. Y'all seeing this? How are you? So I'm thinking like... Why do my lower teeth look so weird? What is happening? Let's take a minute and talk about this video for a second. This was the most frustrating video I think I've ever made. From technical errors to realizing that I forgot to put this one up on the wall so now everything's uneven and I'm gonna have to change the way the rows are which means it's gonna look different on camera. I think if you've never made a YouTube video before, you may not realize- Okay, so here's the thing. I wanted to upload this video on a specific day, either Thursday or Friday this week. When I make my videos, I usually need like a week to a week and a half to plan them out. Um, between planning it, which just like how I want it to look, how I want it to line up, um, if there's specific things I want to say throughout the video, I plan that about a day before I start filming it. Then comes the filming, which can take up to four days, depending on the size of the video, the length of it, and how involved it is. Then comes the editing. Editing takes the biggest amount of time, and so if I want to upload a video on a certain day, so take for example this week, I only have so much time to prepare the video. So if you're like deep in a project and it's filmed, some of it is edited, and then you realize something's not working out. Part of the video deleted. Blah, 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 blah. I either have to completely quit on the project, or I have to extend the time and skip an upload, which is not a good thing to do if you're trying to grow your channel, especially when you don't have that many videos up. Whenever part two comes out, I'm gonna know what to expect, and I'm going to have more of a plan in mind about what I need to do ahead of time. But through the power of editing, I think we managed to stitch it all together. And I'm just gonna say this, this is the only time I'm going to say this, because this video took so much time and so much effort. If you liked it, consider subscribing or giving it a thumbs up just to let me know what kinds of content I should be making in the future and if people will even like these kind of videos or if I'm just wasting time. So thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I will see you all here next time. Mm -hmm.